Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about recent developments in an electric vehicle market. So what are we going to talk about is first of all we're going to begin this video by differentiating what is an electric vehicle compared that to with an hybrid electric vehicle and find out the differences and how we are going to be progressing and moving on with this technology. So first and foremost is which vehicle will dominate the market and which one is suitable for future. On one side, if you see, we have an electric vehicle which is based on electric propulsion system, no ICE engine is used and all the power that is based comes from an energy source which is the battery. All right. Knowing this, the main advantage of this is that it's highly efficient and the power conversion from this propulsion system of electric motor. So you have this sets of skills differentiating that this one is representing a car such as Tesla and other electric vehicles in the market. However, if you see, on the other hand, we have hybrid electric vehicle, which is an alternative it has also used extensive in the last few years. So the reason why it's being used for last few years is that this technology has ICE in addition to that of a battery electric vehicle. All right, this combination is what it's known as hybrid electric vehicle okay so this is the one that's being used and the reason for this is that many people have been having an IC engine so to directly direct them from ICE to an EV is possibly a target that very low people can achieve so to motivate people they have have uh, they have had hybrid electric vehicle to encourage people to move towards an electric sector where your car is fully controlled by an automatic source of uh, electric power. Alright, so nearly all manufacturers have at least one model in hybrid electric vehicle. Whereas when we see an EV, there are still many manufacturers out there which do not have an electric vehicle as of yet. And to name one, I would perhaps say such as Ford, Dodge, Volkswagen, and many more. All right. Knowing this, this is a fundamental idea that these manufacturers of vehicles which are so prominent in the market, they do not have an electric vehicle as of yet. And it's the year 2020. It's about to be 2021 and still there are no signs of an electric vehicle. So whether to see that this electric vehicle are an, in future or not, or our hybrid electric vehicle in the future, we need to know some things about it how this both hybrid and electric vehicles function and in order to differentiate how it functions we need to look at its basic circuits all right so let's go ahead and look at the basic circuit now first and foremost what we see is that this is a hybrid electric vehicle that's uh that's used in series and parallel path of combination Whereas if we see uh, key components for electric vehicle, we see that this one is not being used in a series or parallel path. It might be used in a parallel path though. All right, knowing this, this is the differentiation between the battery electric vehicle, which is an EV, total complete EV versus hybrid electric vehicle. All right, let's go ahead and see how it really functions. So first of all, you have your engine and the engine can be powered by a battery or the fuel, depending on the choice of your source. Once the battery is receiving power from the fuel or battery, it's, it's given that this transmission is held as parallel combination. So in parallel, what's really happening is that whenever the engine is being used in battery or fuel 
knowing this that your power electronic drivers or devices what's really happening here is that in this you have your radio navigation etc all these applications which are being powered either by fuel you can have your AC air conditioners what's really happening is that your fuel either is giving power to this sources or your battery is what's different is that what's really not working with all this is the transmission of your car the transmission is solely depending on the engine if the engine receives the energy the transmission of the car works the transmission is automatically related to the motor of your car if your motor is working properly that means you can turn right or left if your car is functioning properly and this is the whole idea behind hybrid all right now let's change the color and first look at the electric vehicle how it's functioning electric vehicle like I mentioned before is not component on fuel so what we need to discard is the idea of using fuel for converting a gasoline to a power all right knowing this it uses only electricity so you have this electricity and it goes into the battery charger to charge the battery all right fair enough once the battery is charged you also have an inverter the reason why we have inverter is that if you're on the road and the battery decides to malfunction you have the storage capacity of electricity to function the motor all right so it's very essential to have an inverter next to your battery or embedded in your battery pack so this whole thing in fact is considered a one block so it might perhaps look like something like this so you have one pack over here this pack is connected to the motor and this motor can be described as another pack so once your battery charger is plugged into your car this whole thing is being charged and what really happens is that once your battery is fully charged once you remove and the connection for the battery charger this battery pack is actually converting DC to DC converter this conversion of DC to DC is actually a more benefactory so you have more protons more energy stored in your battery giving you miles okay the miles of your car runs up and this also further is used in your electric components that I mentioned over here so this same components are being used over here so this is the differentiation between an EV versus hybrid EV alright I hope you understand the basic and fundamental difference that's being happening in hybrid and electric vehicle knowing this there also is a different types of motor that's being used so what I really mean by that is that you have motors labeled here and here but what does that really mean it's a question mark because in the market there are different types of motor so let's go ahead and look at different types of motor first of all you have a DC motor which we are very very uh, common in the market and this is a classical motor because it's being used for a wrong time and if you study about motors this is the first motor you always come across so it does have electromechanical conversion that's being transferred to your rotor through stationary brushes which are in rubbing contact with copper segments of your commuter this is just a little small description to give you an idea of what this motor actually is so the first one is the DC motor alright the second one is induction motor and this is very popular AC so this one is being DC to DC if we use induction which is also this is used in ICE this is also used in ICE alright 
Now this induction is what's really have what's really different is that we use this induction motor in different applications such as air conditioning, elevator and escalator where we need a greater power. So power is more in this. And the reason is the alternating currents. And the reason why we do this is because this energy is being converted from DC to AC. Once it's being converted, the DC energy actually happens to run at a lower power rate compared to that of an AC. So we use that of our, ad, ad, our advantage and convert that DC to an AC to give an enhance the usage of our practical application. All right, to go to the next one, there's something called efficiency that really needs to take place in order for the third one to make us practical use. But what I mean by that is that this DC brushless motor has higher efficiency compared to that of DC motor. All right. So this is a little technical analysis of what really I mean to say. All right. Going to the next one is permanent magnet synchronous motor. This one is using magnet or equivalent of induction motor, but it's air gapped. Okay. So this air gap is actually providing a magnetic energy between the router and the stator. That gives a more induction power to this motor. All right, this is what actually is happening. The fourth one, the fifth one I mean, is switch reluctance motor. It's a variable reluctance machine and it's famously recent because of the fault tolerance and each phase is decoupled from one another. If you want to know more about this, we can use this in any applications where we have a stator that has one, two, three, four, five. That means we choose what speed our application or perhaps a fan, for example. You have one fan, this is a very bad fan, but you understand if we use at one it's really slow if it's used at five it's really fast so we switch the reluctance the resistance the fan really takes on all right talking about energy sources because in our electric vehicle we have energy sources that really needs to have differentiations of what kind of battery is it using what kind of energy density the cycle life, the duty cycle, the working temperature because if it's too hot it might explode because it's a battery and the cost at the end. So what's really happening is that we see we have a chart over here you can go through the chart and we see that the lowest one is this one. The one I mean to say lowest one in terms of price. Lower the price more the people in the market will prefer it. Also, the manufacturing cost MC will increase, will sorry, decrease as a result of low rate of power. Knowing this, we reach to conclusion. The conclusion is that once we find out this whole operations of different types of electric vehicle in the market as well as hybrid electric vehicles in the market, we're able to create something of sort that are like this and we have mopeds which use something like this we are also able to create an electric playful vehicle for children of ages 20 and under who can use this legally to drive from one destination to an another and this is all being happening with the fact that different types of motors are correlated with the energy sources and it's all being summed up where we talked about the key components and how EVs versus HEVs function. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, give it a like. If you sub haven't subscribed yet, do it as well. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.